Why, hello. So glad to have you back here with us at God's Got a Plan. You know, I did a show some time ago, Believe God for Your Healing. And I believe that this is going to be a spin off from that because so often, you know, we're dealing with, let's just say, these health issues and these problems that we might have in our bodies. And, and we're just trying to figure out, well, Lord, when, 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 um, when am I going to be healed? Well, I want to just take us a little bit deeper into God's word. And my theme and my subject tonight is your faith versus your symptoms. I'm going to say it again. Your faith versus your symptoms. So you need to have that God kind of faith to believe that in spite of what your symptoms are saying to you, in spite of the mere fact that they might not seem to be going away, your faith have to be able to stand up against what the body, what the doctor, what the medicine is not doing. And you have to be able to stand on your faith knowing, Lord Jesus, knowing that what God has put in place. And what did he put in place? He put his son in place. He put his son in place whose blood, oh my God, who died on the cross. Are you hearing me? He put his son in place. And when he put his son in place, he put everything you would need to receive the manifold blessings of God. In other words, a complete healing in your body, a complete healing in your mind, a complete healing in your spirit. And that's what this is about. Knowing that all things are working together for the good in spite of what you're going through. God so love you. And we here at God's Got a Plan, we love you too. And we realize that many of you are still dealing with some ailments and some sicknesses, diseases, some addictions, and you're being tried on every side. So I'm hoping that as we go through this message tonight, that you're going to receive something tonight that's going to help you to be able to better deal with your problem in your situation. And I realize there's not a problem, there's not a situation that this word of God doesn't have a remedy for it. And, and I want you to know that God so loved the world that he gave, he gave what? He gave his only begotten son. And oh my God, a gift. Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. So let's go into the word of God. And I, I pray that you have your Bibles and you're taking notes. Follow me today. And here's what we're going to come out of the book of 1 John. 1 John chapter 5 in the 14th verse. 1 John, not John, but 1 John chapter 5 starting at the 14th verse, and this is what it says. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever, whatsoever we ask for, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. In other words, in regards of what your symptoms might look like, when I ask God, when I present my case, when you present your case, I'm here to tell you, he's a prayer answering God. And he's able to do for you what the doctor, what the, what the, what the medicine, what the medication. So today I'm believing that if there's an ailment, a sickness, a disease in your body, if you're dealing with an addiction, the many addictions that we can be caught up in out here. I believe some chains are going to be broken. I'm believing that God's going to pull down some strongholds. I'm believing God that there's going to be a manifestation of his glory in your life. You're going to come away from this program tonight changed. If you can believe it, you can receive it. I'm speaking to you tonight. If you can believe it, you can receive it. And I guarantee you, because I know God, he backs up his word. And I believe that if you can receive this word tonight, I believe. In other words, as John says, confidence. This is the confidence that 
I have in him, that you should have in him, that you should have in him whatever you ask according to his will. And really, that's what this is about. And I want you to know right now, it's not God's will for you to be sick. So don't talk about, well, God put this on me or God is allowing me to go through this. No, it's not God's will for you to be sick. When you got saved, oh, I want you to know, God, that was a complete, Lord Jesus, transformation. You, you, you still might be carrying some symptoms and some signs of sickness and disease, so on and so forth. But the Bible says in Isaiah 53, he was wounded for your transgressions and bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of your peace was upon him and by his stripes you are healed. And it doesn't say are being healed. You have to be able to receive this word. You have to be able to stand on this word. Trust God. Trust God. Trust this word of God. The Bible says his word will not return void. It will accomplish what he sends it out to do. And I'm believing right now, tonight, he's going to send it to your house. He's going to send it to your home. He's going to send it into the hospital. He's going to send it into that prison. He's going to send it into that nursing home. He's going to send it out to you. He's going to meet you where you're at tonight. And I know God is a prayer answering God. If you can just believe, can you believe him tonight, my brother, my sister? If you can just believe God tonight, I, I, I believe that tonight's going to be a breakthrough night for somebody. You're going to receive a breakthrough tonight. I believe there's going to be a transformation in lives tonight. Lord Jesus, we can be so close to the blessing and not receive it because we're operating in doubt, because we're allowing fear to override the faith that we need. I pray tonight that you're going to have that God kind of faith to stand on this word of God. Irregardless of what the symptoms might say, I'm going to trust God. I'm going to take him at his word. And when you begin to live like that, God shows up. He shows up big time. And he's a God that's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what you can ask or think. Are you hearing me tonight? God want to meet you tonight where you're at right now. You might be on your knees in prayer right now because Lord knows you're tired. You're tired of carrying this weight of sickness, tired of dealing with this addiction, with the drugs or whatever the case may be. You know what you're dealing with in your home. You know what you're dealing with on your job. You know what you're dealing with while you're laying in that hospital bed. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus is the remedy for it all. And it comes by way of his word tonight. Look, 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 look here. The question is, where is your confidence tonight? Where is your confidence tonight? See, it's good to have confidence in our doctors. It's it's good to have confidence in, in our parents and in our pastor and in our church and in our fellowship. It's good to have confidence in, in all of these places and things and people. But my confidence, I surely have to have confidence in God. Where is your confidence tonight? Where is your confidence tonight? In what? In who? Do you have your confidence in tonight? I pray that is in Christ. I pray your confidence, your faith is in Christ. Let's look at Matthew 17 and 20. Matthew 17 and 20. Here's what it says. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, Lord Jesus. uh, did, Did you hear what I said? Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if you shall, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed. So what are we talking about? Some mustard seed faith. A mustard seed is one of the smallest seeds. One of the smallest seeds that grow big. And if we can just muster up some mustard seed faith for our situation, for our problem. I'm here to tell you God can turn it around. He's, you know, some of us might be saying, I'm waiting on the Lord. I'm waiting for my change to come. 
Well, while you're waiting on the Lord, I'm here to tell you tonight, God just might be waiting on you. Did you hear what I said? You're waiting on him to do what he's already done. The reality is God is waiting on you, waiting on you to catch up to this word, waiting on you to get your faith to that place where your faith is in line with what you're speaking. Because many of us can speak a good game. We can talk a good talk. But when we find ourselves in that tight place, when we find ourselves being tried and tested, we don't always stand up under what we're going through, what we're meant to go through. Some things you just have to go through. But it's good to know that you have a Savior who promised you he will never leave you nor forsake you. Are you hearing me tonight? His promise to you tonight is he will never leave you nor forsake you. In other words, he got your back. He got you covered. So in spite of what you're going through tonight, in spite of what you're confronted with, in spite of what you're trying to lay down and sleep on and finding it difficult to sleep, oh, my God, many sleepless nights. Why? Because those symptoms are shouting out to me that I'm not going to be healed, that I, I, I'm, I'm unworthy of God's blessing. Well, I'm here to tell you tonight, I'm going to look at you right in the face tonight and let you know the devil is a liar. Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. And if you know God's voice, you know that it's not his will for you to be sick. You can't go by the symptoms. You have to get your faith to that place and to that level where, my God, your faith can override what you're dealing with. And I'm not going to say it's going to just leave just like that. I would, be, I would be remiss to try to tell you or make you believe that you're sick this long because your faith is not there. There's some things we just have to go through. The Bible says we have to have the patience. Oh, Lord Jesus. You have to have the patience of Job. There's some things you just have to go through. It's the trying of your faith that works patience in you. But let me finish reading that. And you shall say unto this mountain, you shall say unto this mountain, move from here to there, and it shall be moved, and nothing shall be impossible to you. You shall say to your mountain, whatever your, see that mountain is your problem. That mountain could be that sickness that you've been wrestling with for years. That mountain could be that addiction. That mountain could be people that difficult boss, whatever the case may be, that family member that I just can't seem to, to make sense. I don't understand why you're acting like that. I didn't raise you like that as a parent speaking about a child. But I'm here to tell you, you can speak to the mountain. Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And if you can just hold on to some mustard seed faith, See, God loves to work behind the scenes in our life to, to let us see the manifestation of his glory. But you have to come to that place where your faith, Lord Jesus, your faith, you have to replace your doubts with faith. You have to replace your worries, your fears, all of that stuff that the enemy is trying to feed you. Don't you eat it. I'm going to say it again. Whatever he's trying to feed you, don't you eat it. The Bible says that we're called to eat the book. If I'm going to eat anything, let me eat this word of God. Eat the word of God. Eat the book. This is what's going to build your faith. This is what's going to bring you into that place of relationship. See, you could know about him, but God wants you to know him. And sometimes, just sometimes, we have to go through some stuff so we can get to know him. Not just in the pardoning of our sins, but also know him as our healer. Know him, not just as my savior, but as my keeper. See, it's one thing to be saved, but it's another thing to be kept. Because you can confess him with your mouth, but to be kept, Lord Jesus. Because we're dealing with the ups and downs of life, and we just find ourselves being tried, being tested on every side. And I really don't understand why I got to deal with this, why I got to deal with that. And God, you promised me. Maybe if you stop looking at your symptom, it go away. See, 
It might have you, but don't let it, don't let it have you. See, in other words, I might have diabetes, but diabetes don't have me. I might have MS, but MS don't have me. Are you hearing me tonight? See, you have to be able to speak life over yourself. That's what we're here trying to bring a message to you, a message of hope, a message to let you know that you are not what the symptoms say you are. I'm here. To, the Bible says if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation, a new creature. Old things have passed away. Stand on the word of God. It has passed away. Why are you allowing yourself to keep reliving this, to keep carrying it and allowing it to fester and just stay and stay before you? You got to allow it to drop. You got to step on some of this stuff. You got to walk on. You got to walk on it tonight. Because if you don't walk on it, you're not going to be able to sleep on it. Are you hearing me? And God is saying that he every place that your feet would stand tonight, you're able to have it. It's like he told Moses, Joshua, he's telling you tonight. He want to bless you. And he realized if you're sick and allowing these symptoms to override your faith, you're not going to be able to fulfill or to walk in your call. You're not going to be able to effectively serve God and do that which you are called to do. So we have to be able to remove any and all doubt. Are you hearing me tonight? You have to remove any and all doubt. Why? Because it's God's will for you to be healed. It's God's will for you to be blessed. Look at John, John 15 and 7. John 15 and 7. I want you to look at that and see what God is saying to you in John 15 and 7. John 15 and 7 says this. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done for you. Are you hearing me? If you abide in him, him is Christ Jesus. And if he abides in you, now that word abide means live. We're not talking about somebody that want to visit. And I know you've had some folk come by the house and you say, well, they, they stop by and they stop by to visit, but they don't want to leave. They want to live. They want to they want to park up in here in my house. And Lord knows it's time for them to go. Well, if I if I want to send any, hey, you can send folk home or send them out of your house. But Lord knows, Jesus, I want you to be a 24-7 in me. I don't want you to ever leave me. And that's what this is about. Can you imagine? Can you really imagine what it is to experience him 24-7? Can you remember those moments that you had with him where he took you up? And when you went up, you didn't want to come down? And, and Lord knows, the Bible says, in his presence, it's fullness of joy. My God, why? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. I'm going to say it again. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And look at what he says now in the eighth verse. Herein is my father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. He don't just want you bearing fruit, more fruit. He wants you to bear much fruit. And he realized he don't want the symptoms to override what he's called you to do because you're here to bear much fruit. Oh, God, I'm hoping you're receiving this tonight because God really want to bless you. He wants you to be a blessing to somebody. See, the blessing is not just for you to be healed because it's a blessing to be healed. But the real deal is he's, he's blessing you with that healing. Why? Because he want to send you. The great commission is to go ye into all the world and share this glorious gospel, this gospel of salvation, this gospel of peace, this gospel of love. Oh, God want to meet you where you're at tonight. And I'm believing tonight that God is going to do a new thing because I believe that tonight is your night for a breakthrough. I believe that tonight is your night to be touched. 
I believe that God is going to open up that door, that window. I believe that he's going to come in tonight. He's going to touch that ailing body, that aching body, that addicted and afflicted body. I believe he's going to lay hands on you tonight and he's going to heal you tonight from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. If you can believe it, you can receive it. And I'm going to have prayer for you in a minute, in a few minutes. I'm going to have prayer for you. And we're going to touch and agree and we're going to believe God for the manifestation of his glory in your life. Are you hearing me? Look at John 14 and 13. John 14 and 13 says this. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do so that my father may be glorified in the son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you shall ask anything in my name, I shall do it. Are you hearing me? That sounded just like, that, that sound like the Lord is about to do something. Are you hearing me? He's about to do something in your life. Why? Because he wants you to know that you can talk to him. He wants you to know that he's not far, he's near. And I'm here to tell you right now, he's, he's right there on that, on, on that sofa with you. He's right there in bed with you. He's with you in the hospital. He's with you wherever you are. The Bible says, where can you go from his presence? There's no place you can go from his presence. Are you hearing me tonight? No place you can go from his presence. Why? Because the Lord loves you that much that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Oh, God loves you so much. And we here, we love you too. I'm going to give you this last verse of scripture. In Mark chapter, 20, Mark chapter 11. And the 24th verse says this, therefore, I say unto you, what things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. I'm going to say that again. Believe whatsoever things you desire when you pray. Can you believe God for tonight? Can you believe God for your healing tonight? Can you believe him for the manifestation of his glory over you tonight? God want to bless you real good tonight. I believe even before this program goes off the air, some of you are going to be healed tonight. Some of you are going to be delivered tonight. And I'm going to say, he says there, what things you desire when you pray. You just have to have a, a real desire for it tonight. Believe that you receive it. Having that confidence having that faith to stand on what God has promised you. And it shall, and you shall have them, meaning covering whatever it is that you're going through in your life. Oh, God, Father, we just thank you tonight. Uh, put your hands up. Put your hands up. Meet me where I'm at right now. Please meet me where I'm at right now. Let's touch and agree right now and believe God for your symptoms. If you can make it to your screen right now, touch my, just touch, come in agreement with me right now. And we're going to believe God for your complete healing right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray right now. I pray, Father God, that you will touch. I pray that first of all, Lord, that you would forgive us of any and all sin. I pray for a fresh start and a new beginning. I pray, Father God, that you will wash us with the blood. I pray that you will meet my brother, meet my sister. Oh, God, lay your hands upon their hands. I pray, Father, that there would be a transference. Oh, God, of disease, of sickness. Oh, God, of addiction. I pray, Father God, that you take it on. You bore our sorrow, our griefs. And, Lord God, I pray that you would allow them, Father God, to be able to walk in the newness of life. Oh, God. I pray, Father, that you will now bless them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. And wherever they might find themselves tonight, let them know deep down on the inside that you have already healed. You have already delivered. You have already set free. My brother, my sister, if you can believe it, 
your mountain have just moved. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. And that's what this is about. Trusting God and taking him at his word, knowing that all things are working together for the good for them who are called according to God's purpose. And it's God's will that you are to be blessed. It's God's will that you are to be healed and that you're to be blessed. Oh, my God. I want you to know that God got you in the hollow of his hand. He loves you. We hear it. God's got a plan. We love you, too. And we just... We just want you to know that as you continue to watch these programs, my God, we're hoping that these programs are encouraging you. This program is not meant to take your church's place or your pastor's place, but this is to give you a little something extra to be able to feed on and to be able to make it. And that's what this is about. So if you're receiving that something that is a blessing to you, why don't you reach out and, and let us know by way of telephone or Drop a card, a letter. If you want some special prayer, you know, you can call us. The credits will be listed at the end of the program. You can call me and just let me know what that situation might be. And as I always say, if you're interested in receiving a daily bread, just send your name, your number, uh, your, an address so we can send it to you at no charge. We love you now. Come back and see us again the same time, the same place, in the same station. Keep watching the show. And if you've been blessed, tell a friend about us and let them be as blessed as you are. And we love you. Come on back and see us again. Thank you so much. God bless you. Don't let your symptoms override your faith. Praise God.